Hello and welcome to the new Peas in a Pod podcast. So today, myself, Mr. Brazier and Mr. Goldman are going to talk about drugs. We're going to do the Drug Olympics. So yeah. we're going to name the different uh, drugs and what athletes they might suit. For example, uh, we might go into talking about steroids and what athletes in the Olympics they could suit um, and why they would suit those. This has been discussed quite a lot before, actually. Athletes. The principle of this. On a serious note, it has been discussed that potentially could uh, could we do this? Get everyone so drugged up that... I mean, I'm not sure it would be a right way to go. Yeah, so drugged up that they could be like superhuman. But on a serious how, note, how you, quick... you, it's easy to police, isn't it? If, it's, if it was legal and it was controlled, it would be easier to police rather than people doing it behind... Behind the yeah. like behind the organisation's back and the dangers that come with it, it's an interesting concept. You'd need some uh, big old changing rooms for the uh, weightlifters if steroids were were legal. <laughs> yes, you would. Yes, you would. <laughs> right, should we get into it? Yeah, let's go. First one. Anabolic steroids. Probably the most well known. Yeah. Uh, just quickly for those of you listening, uh, this helps to build muscle mass uh, quickly. Uh, benefits of this are speed, strength, and aggression. There's some quite serious side effects, though. Yeah. Uh, liver damage, mood swings. You, you must, you must yeah. take uh, yeah. anabolic steroids. Yeah, we've heard about roid rage before, so mood swings, um, infertility, baldness. Oh, God, it is me. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, no, we're in trouble. Um, but, yeah, the big ones, obviously, the things that they're going for is the benefits. They're not worried too much about the side effects. It's the benefits of speed, strength, aggressive, aggression, power. Mm. Um, what are we thinking, then? So some obvious ones. This is, for me, sprinters, bodybuilders. Um, you think stereotypically, or you think about the examples of athletes that have been famously banned from competitions. You would think 100-meter sprinters and steroids when you're Linford Christie. Uh, ben Johnson, you've got um, Gatlin. Dwayne Chambers. Yeah. That's All well. examples of athletes that run 100 meters. I think meters. if you think about most most athletes, one of the big things you would talk about is muscle mass, speed. Obviously, we're moving away from the endurance events, but mm. probably 400 meters, 800 meters down. And then even the field events, most of them yeah. you're probably going to talk about power and strength. Long jump, power and strength, speed. Mm. I mean, it, it does it does beg the question though. Triple jump, hop, skip, and where the hell did he go? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the situation we'd be in with straight this. Straight into stand. Yeah. How? I mean, pits would have to go massive, wouldn't they? Oh, how be good, how though. long? How long could a human jump? If they were fully... So what's the world record? Drugged up. Eight, eight, I think. Eight, eight metres something, I think. Right. I believe. So how... I'm, I just they'd go over how, ten. How far you could push yourself. I think they'd you... go over ten. So triple jump is 18. Mm. You're going to add at least at least 40 cent- centimetres on the, onto each phase of that. Yeah. Quick maths. Yeah, I've passed. It's one metre 20. Nice. I hope I've said that very confidently. Yeah, you did. Um, so, steroids, 100 metres, would be ran in, Mr Goldman. What wow. do you reckon? Well, they'd go sub-9, wouldn't they? They'd go eight, over 9. Yeah. Eight and a half? I, I think it'd be less I think it'd be less obvious in them events. Yeah. Because they're over such a short... Yeah, short and average. even the ones that have been caught for it haven't yeah. gone there was never ridiculously like, low. Yeah. There was yeah. never like... Big world record. Shot putters though. Hammer, shot put, discus. I thought about javelin. hammer. Hammer. How much speed could you get? How much momentum could you build before you before you launched? Now I'm thinking about these yeah, events. I, I actually want it to happen. Yeah. Uh, how far? I don't think it's uh, morally right. I was considering bringing it into uh, the Samuel Whitbread... Um, Olympics. It'd be a good sports day, wouldn't it? It would be a very good sports day. It's like the canteen selling, uh, selling all sorts. I don't think this is going to be allowed to go out. 
I think we need to change. I think we need to change the uh, route of our discussion here, Mr. Brazier. <laughs> um, so, just to confirm, we are not considering this <laughs> as a Samuel Whitbread Olympics. We are not condoning this whatsoever. We are merely discussing the principles of it happening. Beta blockers. Let's move on. Fresh start. Yeah, new well, well, new well, drug. Well. Fresh start. Um, so, beta blockers slow down your heart rate. Um, it blocks receptors in the bodies um, from substances such as adrenaline, so real calming influence on the body. I'm going to hit the side effects again, aren't I? Headaches, dizziness, uh, muscle cramp, heart flutters. So this is this could be an interesting one for for the Olympics because there's a range of different sports that might use mm. it. Um, you could do with some of this. When we get on them putting greens and you've got a hole apart for birdie and you're shaking, yeah, this would help you massively. It'll calm you down when you're on the first tee and you're about to block one out of bounds. Mm. It'll just it'll just relax you a little bit. So maybe golfers. I'd be golfers so relaxed. Olympics. I'd probably top it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Olympic golfers, uh, Justin Rose would benefit from. Uh, like this, I imagine he'll be competing for GB in the uh, next Olympics. Uh, archery shooting, previous Olympic champion, yeah, shooting. So the actual example we've got up on the computer of uh, someone who's been banned for using beta blockers in the Olympics um, was Kim Jong Su, who won Olymp- uh, Olympic silver in the fifty meter pistol shoot and the ten meter in uh, pistol shoot in two thousand and eight, um, and then obviously. The, the medals that he won changed hands. So even though he cheated, he still didn't win Olympic gold. No, he won silver. Second, which, uh, which is interesting. Or does it just mean the person who won gold didn't get caught? Didn't get caught. Mm. Um, what other events have we got for beta blockers? So what in I mean, the Olympics? Putting away from the Olympics, snooker. Yeah, I was thinking darts, nice yeah, steady darts hand. Would be one as well. When you're at the Ali Pali between Christmas and New Year. And you've got a, a crowd of thousands behind you calling you all sorts. It just calms Singing you songs. down. Yeah, blocks that out. Steadies your hand when you're throwing your darts. I wonder, I'd be really interested in how many athletes have dabbled in this kind of, in, the, in those kind of realms of sport. Hmm. How many athletes have gone down that, this route? Because I'm sure when you go into your first events, that is probably one of the hardest things to deal with. Yeah, nerves. The and... crowds, nerves. Hmm. And some people love, don't. Some people love it. Some people kind of build from it, don't they? They, mm. they? they become better, but some people really do struggle. So it'd be really interesting if... I'd like to think not many, um, but you never know. Again, it depends if they've been caught. Mm. Talking about being caught, diuretics. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Seamless. Being caught short. Yeah. And go to the toilet. What, and why is that? What are you referring to? Because uh, I actually don't know what diuretics are. So... <laughs> Well done. We're very um, good at this. So, uh, diuretics uh, increase the amount of fluid passed through urine. urine. Okay. So, um, it relaxes and widens blood vessel walls. Um, and benefits of this is uh, it lowers your blood pressure and gets rid of toxins. Uh, side effects. Well, obviously, um, you're going to be visiting the toilet quite a lot. Mm. Um, also, constantly feeling thirsty. Your blood pressure is likely to lower, um, and also as a result of you being dehydrated, um, well, dehydration is one, but also uh, muscle cramps are uh, probably going to be quite likely. Um, this is a strange one because it's, it's not one that really you'd think is, is used, but it's used more than I think people realise, mm. mainly because it can be used to hide other drug use. We haven't really mentioned that, but it can be used to flush out other drugs. Yeah. So obviously the quicker you get a substance out of your system after using it, then the less chance there is of that being... So I guess it's double danger as well, because not only have you got the side effects of this, you'd have the side effects of Mm. the initial drug that you've used. So that's one way these diuretics could be used. Um, For the Drug Olympics, uh, I would give these to my boxer um, to help him shred some weight to make sure that he can make his weight category within the Olympics. Yeah, Taekwondo yeah. as well. Any any of the... Uh, Weight categories. I was going to call them fighting sports. Um, Judo. Yeah. Be another good one. So, 
lots of if you, I guess, um, bobsleigh um, cyclists potentially. Do bobsleigh have to? Do people in the bobsleigh want to be light or do they want to be heavy? Don't have to be. It depends on where they are. Don't I yeah. think they order themselves, don't they? Because the one at the back is your most powerful. Because they're yeah. That's where I'd kick, be. Kick, aren't they? I'd be. I'd be there. Uh, P bobsleigh. You'd be at the front underneath. I'd be the. Li- I'd be tucked away. My head, my head would be down, tucked in. Who are we going at the back? Actually, I, I wouldn't be at the back. The Clark's at the back. Clark. Clark. We'd be doing a wheelie the whole way down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to go quicker. Cool, we'd have a heavy bobsleigh team. Power though. Powerful. You're not getting into the proper bobsleigh team. Rhodes. Me. Rhodes, Clark, Clark, Hart. Power. Although Hart's half the man he was, isn't he now? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Arthur. By the way, that was a compliment. I've just paid Mr. Hart there. Let's get it. He'll enjoy that. this week. Um, Batachargy, powerful. Yep. Um, yeah, there's some size. Have to be some extra leg room in this bobsleigh. Yeah. There's a hell of a lot of height in it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay some extra, like when you get on there. It's going to be knees plane. up by ears. <laughs> right, we were talking about diuretics a minute ago, weren't we? Jockeys. Jockeys, yeah. They're Light available. and jockey. Quicker the horse can go. Water like, accounts for a lot, of, a lot of weight, doesn't it? So mm. anyone trying to meet a kind of weight category, drinking lots of water will have a, an immediate effect on kind of shedding that last minute weight. So mm. let's move on. Yeah, narcotics. Oh, numbing pain. So narcotic analgesics. So these are your your pain your painkillers essentially. Um, they're they're basically designed to stop you feeling pain. So if you're struggling with an injury or you're trying to continue to work through a niggling injury, this is going to be the one that helps us kind of get through it. Mm. And uh, obviously the problem with that is if you're playing with an injury and you can't feel it. You're much more likely to increase that injury or make it worse or prolong your your time out of the sport because you can't feel the damage that you're doing to yourself. Um, it's also very addictive. So, for example, if you are competing at your chosen event, let's say you are an Olympic golfer, which obviously you can't be far far off. Oh. Um, uh, Olympic golfer in the summer I am nearly yeah. an Olympic golfer uh, you've got a, a shoulder injury you might take these uh, drugs to numb the pain whereas when you continuously play and continuously hitting the same movements and you can't feel that then you're more likely to increase the time you're going to if we talk about sports here this, this could in the Olympics this could be used for pretty much anything couldn't it yeah there's going to be different like you can think of impact Sports like the boxing and things like that, where obviously, I think I, I don't. I mean, I don't think we can get sued for this, but I think Floyd Mayweather um, a few years back get get caught for this. I may have made that up. There was a boxer that oh, definitely yeah. um, was definitely accused of of this. Right, I've been involved with narcotic analgesics, um, so that's obviously one. Mm. But mainly. Most sports, if you're yeah, carrying an if injury. you're injured and, and you can't compete, especially because we're talking about the drug Olympics and the Olympic Games, these athletes would have trained for four years for these events. Don't and if there's it. a re- yeah, they don't want to miss it. If there's a, a way that they can compete and and still one thing that comes up every year when we talk about this is um, painkiller injections that happen in the Premier League mm. and how that isn't why it isn't um, classed as kind of yeah. drug use. I always think of Andrew Flintoff as my example. He literally played cricket on one knee for six years, taking... There must be particular levels of painkiller that are allowed Mm. and then some that go over the threshold and put you... I guess it all comes down to how much danger you're putting the the sportsman under. Mm. What those side effects are. Yeah. Mm. So next one is EPO. So you've got your growth hormone. So these increase the rate of uh, the red blood cells. I can read that then. No, I think second. you've oh, misread wait. that completely oh, there as oh, well. Flat. So we've got so peptide hormone has got two of them, Mr. Brazier. Mm-hmm. We've got EPO, 
uh, which is your uh, essentially, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. Um, it's very, very Erythropoietin. Yeah, uh, it's all to do with red blood cells. So how much oxygen um, can be carried in your red blood cells. Right. And then you've got the growth hormone, which is the HDH, which is the human growth hormone, which again is naturally in our body. So both of these we find in our body. But you can obviously inject more of it mm-hmm. to, to, have a, to have a bigger impact on performance. So what kind of athletes would you use? So EPO's classic one is, it's all endurance. So red blood cells obviously are used to carry oxygen. So we're looking at endurance runners. Um, we're looking at cycling is where this is rife. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a really big issue. This is what Lance Armstrong um, and his crew of merry men um, mm-hmm. was, well, after years and years of saying he didn't do it, he came out and admitted it, didn't he? Yeah. And then HGH would go down more of a route of building muscle mass, so make you bigger. Now, one of the real com- run the people that people will know about, or the sports people that people will know about, is I've said people a lot there. Hmm. Um, is Messi. So Messi was prescribed HGH when he was younger um, to increase his growth size. Didn't know that. He was always smaller, yeah. So, hmm. um, but again, that was prescribed medically for him it wasn't something he was taking illegally off, uh, mm. off dodgy Dave yeah. down the road um, so these thicken your blood uh, and they cause the heart to work harder don't they so this as a result will they increase your chance of having a stroke or a heart attack yeah essentially you're making your body um, do more than it's trained naturally to do mm-hmm. um, so you're going to put it under a lot more stress so if we're thinking about HGH that, again that would come into your your power and strength events, uh, similar to what the steroids would do. Cyclists, rowers? Yeah, cyclists, what, in terms of HGH? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Yeah. So you're still gonna be, you, if you're bigger and stronger, you tend to be um, a more able sportsman, don't you? Mm. I know you wouldn't know much about that. <laughs> I'm being very sizist here, aren't I? Yeah, that was very nice. Because you are the more talented out of the two of us. Oh, that's another compliment I've thrown out there. Take that. There we um, go. So... Maybe I should pop to the doctors and say, see if I can get me some uh, it's too some, late for you, mate. some some messy pills. <laughs> yeah. Right, stimulants. A range of these. Yeah. So, um, have you had any stimulants today? I had. I had a cup of tea earlier. And yeah. That has caffeine in. Thank you, Mister Batchargy, for. Uh, yeah, he's making that. Tea. He's he's very good at teas. <laughs> Very good. Everyone's got their niche, haven't they? Yes. Yeah. Everyone's, got their, everyone's got their talent. Right, so, um, stimulants such as caffeine and cocaine um, are examples of that. So, um, what do these do? So, reduce fatigue, they help you with alertness, and um, they can maintain slash help um, your aggressiveness. So, they can, be, they can obviously be two different reasons for taking these. Now... Maradona's a classic case of uh, taking stimulants. Um, one of the big things was cocaine for him. Um, now, that wasn't taken to act as a performance enhancing drug. It was obviously a lifestyle um, misjudgment from him. But obviously, you can take caffeine and similar, similar non-legal um, stimulants to kind of improve your performance by doing what you just said, reducing fatigue keeping yourself alert, um, I guess get you in the zone. Mm. Um, it's supposed to help you perform for longer, for harder, keep you focused, um, make sure that you are on top of your game. What about mm. side effects? So shaking, high blood pressure, you're going to have cravings and then you're going to have irregular heartbeat. Okay, So you're putting your heart under under a greater threat because sports, of... Sports then, what about some sports? If we're going back to the Olympics... I reckon team sports can have quite a big impact on these ones. What, what do you have to be alert for? What sports are in the Olympics? But I think it's more. I think it's more being that fired up, isn't it? Yeah. Like if you think about like rugby, football, hockey, basketball. Then when you first come onto the court or the pitch, mm. that kind of that yeah. pump. Um, like you think about the classic picture of Maradona after he scores mm. going up to the camera and he shakes wired yeah and he is you can tell that he's yeah. not in a good place mm. um, what have we got I'd stick with the team, most of the team, team sports team sports 
I suppose you could argue. Trying to again. think of one that, that we might not have mentioned so far. So many sports in the Olympics. Equestrian, but we're not going to need to be no. fired up for the question. Equestrian. Uh, Could give the horses some. Oh, good lord. <laughs> I'd not like to ride a no, horse. No, I'm not a horse anyway. They're way too legs. big. <laughs> I got kicked by a horse when I was younger. Ah, that explains a lot. <laughs> it does, but that's also why I don't like horses. <laughs> right. I think last. Last drug we're on to is blood doping. So this is one that's commonly confused with EPO. Yeah. They're two different things, but very, very similar. What they do is the same, mm-hmm. but it's two different ways of doing it. So this is all about removing blood from the body, yes. storing it, and then re-injecting it into the body. Yeah. yeah. So benefits are? Increased number of red blood cells. Yeah. Um, which means we can carry more oxygen, we can get rid of more carbon dioxide, we can train for harder, for longer. We can so which is great higher. for your cardiovascular endurance. Perfect. For cycling again. Mm-hmm. So this is the one that you're tricking your body into doing what it does naturally without actually putting anything yeah. synthetic into your body like you would do with the EPO stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, marathon runner. Yeah, really yeah. good one. Marathon walker. Oh, the old waddle. Yeah. The old waddlers. Um, triathlon triathletes I think again Lots again, you could argue you can, yeah you can argue a lot of the team sports as well yeah. um, are going to need this kind of stuff one of the big things with this really tough to um, track as well mm. if you've ever watched Icarus yeah. on Netflix that's definitely something to watch regarding drugs in sport they talk about EPI and blood doping and it's really really tough um, for like the the drug people wada wada there you go yeah. uh, for them to actually track it and figure out if people are doing this mm. yeah because essentially what you're doing is taking something that's natural that you've produced taking it out and then putting it back in so difficult to to track so to where are they storing it I mean their fridge at home next to the milk <laughs> what mm. I mean it's, it's at very... the level at the level that we're talking about in the drug olympics I think they've got scientists. The made up, the made yeah. up drug Olympics yeah. that we're discussing. We've got scientists, and there'll be uh, it'll be a big team yeah. working. You're not getting it mixed up with your ketchup, are you? <laughs> and if you are, an interesting fish and chips you've got on a, on a Friday night. Oh no! <laughs> and on that note, yeah, let's call it a day. To summarise, that, me hungry. Yeah, to summarise that last point, don't listen to us. Listen to Icarus on Netflix. Yes. Sorry for wasting the last twenty minutes.